Hello and welcome back to the right part. Today we're going to take a look at set number 60263 Ocean Mini Submarine. It contains 41 elements and will retail for 10 US dollars when it gets released. Well, actually, it's already available worldwide on shop.lego.com. That is certainly a very rare occurrence during the coronavirus pandemic, but a welcome one to say the least. However, as this is a 4 plus junior set, nobody cares about the definitely not a map submarine, or this mediocre side build, or the average minifigure. The only reason why any self-respecting A4 will buy this is for the new Hammerhead Shark. The new Hammerhead Shark uses the old Reef Shark base piece for its body, but it has a new Hammerhead add-on. Like previous Reef Sharks, it has three gill slots. Other real sharks have around five. This is okay as it would seem a bit cluttered if they included all five of these gills. And there should also be another a fin over here and a couple more pectoral fins. However, I'm pretty sure that LEGO simplified the shark design to keep it more minimalist and cartoony. The new head add-on has some nice detailing at the underside with these two large gouges. While this is a nice design detail, I am pretty sure that real hammerhead sharks do not have two indentations on the underside of their head. The eyes are a nice print. They are pretty cartoony, but then again, Lego is moving to a more kid-friendly style with all these animals, so it kind of fits the new design ethos. Lastly, you cannot fit a minifigure into the hammerhead's mouth, as uh, it's too small. So no epic Jaws hammerhead recreation here. It's now time for comparisons. Here I've brought out the new reef shark and the oldest uh, base shark. My mouth is a bit tight on this version, but it should still be okay. Take a look at the hammerhead shark with the new reef shark. As you can tell, their body piece is identical and the head follows roughly the same shape around this area. You can clearly see some of the Reef Shark influences in this part of the head. Unfortunately, as the Hammerhead uses the Reef Shark body, it is too vertical uh, in the front. Real Hammerhead Sharks have a much flatter head and should slope down more dramatically. Of course, the pre-existing body mode limits it, so the Hammerhead Shark's head looks too vertical. This is extremely obvious from the front, as the hammerhead shark looks extremely derp. Uh, granted that real hammerhead sharks do look derp as well, but this is a bit of an excess derpness in my opinion, and you can tell that there's way too much plastic at, at this area, it's too tall, it should be a bit thinner. Comparing it to the older shark, I will say that the new shark body mold is definitely an improvement. There's more details, for example the gills, and the shark's tail is of a less awkward shape. But I do miss the old indented pupils, which definitely do fit Quint's description of the shark attack on the Indianapolis. You know the thing about a shark, he's got lifeless eyes, black eyes, like a doll's eye. When he comes at you, he doesn't seem to be living. Yeah, this definitely ain't any doe's eyes. Now, because Lego, uh, can never leave hammerhead sharks as purely natural predators. They have to be guarders of some hidden oceanic loot. <clears throat> and over here, the hammerhead shark is guarding this little treasure chest, which comes with two gems. Of course, you do get extras of each of these gems in the set, so you get four gems in total. You can insert the seaweed into either this hole in the hammerhead shark to give it the appearance as if it's swimming over it, or you can attach it to this hole at the tail. Both work. However, this build is extremely disappointing. Not because of how basic it is, it's full plus. Well, that's what I expect. But because of what it could be. Take a look at the instruction manual at the very back. They show some real life shots of the uh, parts included in the set. So here we have a shot of a real life hammerhead shark. And as you can tell, the head is way flatter and the curve isn't this vertical. But over here, they show what this little piece of seabed is actually meant to represent, and that's an entire freaking coral reef. 
it's a piece of seaweed, it's not colourful host of biodiversity. I don't know who decided that this was an accurate representation of the coral reef. I'm pretty sure some Lego marketing exec just pulled it out of their <laughs> brain. I mean, what, what else would they pull it out of to make the Lego.com description sound more appealing? Minor rant aside, this is a competent piece of extra scenery and definitely does help with the world slash sea building. Moving on to the submarine. This is not a submarine, it's a Mac. It uses the Mysterio Mac base piece. It has Mac arms that can also function as legs. This is a submarine Mac. Furthermore, this submarine has absolutely no controls. Uh, you can see the minifigure inside, but there's no gears or lever sticks or even any display for him to control it. I'm just going to assume that this controller is telepathic and can operate the submarine using his fantastic mind. I assume that this is an airtight compartment as the crew member is not wearing any sort of oxygen tank. But it's not really airtight, is it? With these two gaping holes down below. At the back, there are two rotors that can be spun around like so. They do spin remarkably well, I'll give them that, and they are kind of fun to play around with. Finally, we have adjustable arms which can be rotated 360 degrees, and you can bring them down, they use a ratcheted joint and there are clips on each arm which allow you to hold the gems. Here I'm using the two extra gems given in the set. However, as this is a Mac and I love ripping off popular YouTuber just too good, it is time to pose this bad boy. Here is the pose of the Mac walking, here is the Mac doing a victory dance, here is the Mac looking like it's about to eat its human compatriot. And finally, here is the Mac initiating global robot domination. And finally, we're going to take a look at the minifigure, who uh, has a reprint of the Lego trousers. Uh, for, for those who don't know, Lego has been using this print for party pants in the Lego City line for at least two years now. But finally, it's been printed on a uh, sand blue base, which uh, I welcome the change of color. And uh, he, he has a vest uh, printed on it. Uh, no logos this time, so if you want to use this for, say, construction or manufacturing plant, you can completely use it there, as there's no logo tying it to the deep sea exploration theme. And he does have a smirking expression and a red hat. At the very back, we have this disappointing coral reef and um, some real life photos of hammerhead sharks. And this little advertisement over here saying supporting National Geographic Explorers. Like everything in the world of corporations, this is extremely vague. I do not know if National Geographic gets a subsidy from sale of these sets, like they get a portion of the sales revenue, or if they are sponsoring LEGO and giving LEGO money to promote environmentalism. Personally, I think this Na National Geographic getting a cut of LEGO's profit from these sets. As here it says, Lego City supports National Geographic Society Explorer grants, uh, which I assume is Lego giving National Geographic monetary grants. What's more interesting are these two kids go free with paid adult ticket Legoland promotion leaflets. Unfortunately, I live in Hong Kong and we do not have a Legoland near us. So, um, I'm gonna have to go to either Malaysia or Nagaya to go to Legoland. And I am not spending a couple thousand dollars on airplane tickets just to get a free kid ticket. In addition, this set was released during the coronavirus pandemic, and nobody, nobody, unless they're absolutely crazy, is going on holiday with the virus uh, basically kicking around everywhere. So this is kind of a daft promotion, and it is going to sit and rot in my cupboard where it slowly expires. In conclusion, this 4 plus set is a competent. The Mac <coughs> submarine <coughs> uh, d d does its job fine. I suppose kids will have fun spinning the propellers and finding buried loot because these are not explorers, they are pirates desecrating the underwater graves of treasure chests. I do not know why Lego feels the need to include hidden treasure in every single explorer set when they are meant to be, you know, discovering the hidden beauty in the natural world. Um, but monetary beauty can suffice 
the, this side build is just plain embarrassing, given that it's meant to be a coral reef. We're not going to talk about that. The hammerhead shark is nice, although it does have some major design flaws, including the slope over here, which is way too vertical. So I'll give this set a 6 out of 10. For $10, you're really not throwing away too much money. I would recommend it to anybody uh, who wants the new hammerhead shark. Uh, that's it for this video, if you enjoyed the content I make and the content I do, which mostly revolves around LEGO reviews and more importantly mock videos, which I'm personally more proud of, uh, please consider hitting subscribe and turn on notifications. And while you're there, leave a like and drop a comment, it will be greatly appreciated in my war against the evil overlords of the YouTube algorithm. Until next time, bye bye.